So thanks, Kurt, for being with us today uh, in our data talk session, where you want to know more about the data vaccinator. Before we talk about that, would you like to introduce yourself? Where are you coming from and what brought you to the data vaccinator? Um, my name is uh, Kurt Kamra. I'm uh, one of the two co-founders of Ratchify, a company that has been involved in uh, high security data exchange for more than a decade. And uh, over and over again, uh, we were confronted with demands from customers who said, if only we had good pseudonymization uh, working with our databases, uh, life would be much easier for us. And uh, uh, I shared with you when we had our first discussion, the anecdote of the uh, president of Singapore, Lee Hsien Long, uh, who, uh, who publicly announced uh, that they, they, the Singaporeans, have now the, the most secure electronic health record system in the world. And uh, it only took uh, hackers two weeks to put uh, Lee Hsien Long's medical records up on Facebook. So, yeah, this is just one of the anecdotes, but uh, you can add one or two or many each and every day, because uh, like in the real world, uh, where accidents happen in the data world, data accidents happen for whatever reason, quite often uh, leakages happen, uh, not uh, because you have an evil party trying to hack you, it, it is simply uh, a system administrator on a Friday afternoon uh, putting the wrong tick in the box and then that leaves uh, millions of data records vulnerable uh, in the internet and by the end of the day you may be uh, you, you may find your name together with your financial records or even worse the wrong party has uh, taken possession of those records and uh, tries to blackmail you or tries to blackmail your employer. Electronic payslips is another example. So uh, this is just the world how it is. We thought about uh, healing that situation and not healing it post effect, but starting where the root cause of the problem is. And the root cause is uh, we traditionally store everything in one database. Every application that we know of usually uses one database. Quite often it's a second or a third, but uh, all this precious data is typically being stored in one uh, single database that can be your name together with your medical records. It can be your name together with your financial records. It can be your name and your, your uh, transactional history on uh, eBay or your transactional history with a car leasing a company. Uh, whoever is active in this world uh, is leaving his data in uh, those places. And then, of course, the companies that uh, serve you are obliged to protect that data. There is a lot of protection equipment out there, but uh, if you heal the problem at the root by simply storing uh, the name of a person and the medical record of that person in two databases, and uh, that is called pseudonymization uh, from an IT point of view, you have more or less, uh, you have more or less introduced the airbag to the data industry. Today, the data industry doesn't have an airbag and data vaccinator is the airbag. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about medical records, when I would go to the doctor or to a physiotherapist, I would fill in my personal details. Those then would be pseudomized with some kind of ID and every other data that then in the next, in the course of the session, my medical data would be linked to this pseudonym is that how it works uh, that's uh, correct and it's done in the very application so it's not stored in this big uh, database uh, which then post effect is being split into two mm -hmm. parts 
a data vaccinator from a software point of view is a Lego block that programmers take and put into their software. And it can be any software, it's any cloud software. And uh, we have already the first um, bigger software vendors talking to us about uh, taking the, the data vaccinator, putting it into their applications. And uh, the risk profile of your data goes down because mm -hmm. the data is then split in two parts, which uh, in themselves are not vulnerable to the data accidents that we mm -hmm. actually talked about. The, uh, in order to make it not uh, a niche, it could be a niche if you try to uh, persuade uh, software vendors and the industry as a whole that they should buy software from you, we said let's give it free of charge to the community and this free of charge model is called open source and uh, there are different open source models we have chosen uh, the most liberal ones uh, that is on the server side agpl uh, that also covers the the cloud software uh, that uh, we see proliferate everywhere and on the client side it's mit uh, MIT named after the famous American University, but it literally means uh, this is software, do with it whatever you want. <laughs> so basically, this is how we give it to the industry. Uh, and of course, uh, we see uh, a lot of supporters uh, behind us. That is, uh, for example, the data privacy office, uh, people who have to comply with GDPR and other regulation. And uh, companies by themselves find it uh, way easier to run an application data vaccinator style than having this big vulnerability out in the internet. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm a company of, or I'm an app developer, I can use data vaccinator um, as open source software. I can also afterwards implement it and that way have let's say two uh, data storages and if then there is a security accident the uh, the breaches will either have just a long list of nails names or a long list of information that is not identifiable exactly yeah mm -hmm. and, and uh, you go first. There is this uh, one percent left where a very very smart hacker one way or another finds uh, a way to get together the pieces, but in 99% of the cases, you are fine. Mm -hmm. And um, is that speci specifically interesting for several industries, or would you say this is a solution uh, for every, every niche, for every topic where there's personal data involved? Yeah, data vaccination is uh, sector agnostic. That means wherever you have sensitive data and uh, most of the data out there is sensitive then uh, you use data vaccinator and uh, you have it sorted we started with a medical case we added an iot case there are now uh, iot um, devices um, that uh, have data secured data vaccinator style you go into finance where you have a uh, big uh, challenges and requirements from a GDPR point of view and you carry on to public services of, of any kind and uh, basically um, the uh, the big software vendors are going will have to find a solution to the problem and uh, you either develop something by yourself uh, which is fine or you take a data vaccinator which is better it's better for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, as we have the software developed uh, and the community contributing, uh, we have more users than uh, many, uh, uh, many typical uh, software application vendors. And uh, then uh, what we um, have to do, and therefore I mentioned the Lego block, is to keep uh, the very focus on the data vaccination side of the software, keep the software clean and mean, and make integration of the software uh, not only 
uh, easy to do, but also commercially viable, which means uh, if a software c company has to invest, uh, let's say, uh, 500 man days in doing it right, why not take the data vaccinator module and integrate it and only spend 50? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what I want to say is pseudonymization has always been around for the last 20 years, but more as a concept and not as an implemented concept. The reason mm -hmm. for that is uh, as soon as things start to become difficult and expensive, people have the tendency to postpone to the next year. And so pseudonymization has always been postponed from uh, year one to year two because uh, you had other urgencies, other requirements, and the budgets were not there. What we bring to the table as data vaccinator is a solution that, uh, in addition to solving the problem, uh, saves uh, people real money because it's much easier to integrate uh, a software of this kind than try to develop your own version of it. Mm -hmm. And your solution sounds quite straightforward, like the, the solution to the problem. Why only now? It's not technically that difficult, is it? It could have been possible already right. earlier. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, a new invention uh, that you could uh, patent, for example. Uh, it has been written up in books. Uh, there have been... Uh, a lot of studies made, and there have been implementations. It's not that pseudonymization hasn't been implemented, but uh, the big wave is still to come. The 99.9% .9 of applications that should have and don't have it for the time being have not uh, implemented it for the reasons I mentioned. It's mm -hmm. cost, it's uh, people who were not there and uh, of course you need uh, skills in the encryption uh, space uh, out of uh, 100 programmers you cannot give this task to all the 100 uh, which means you have to move them through training you have to move them through encryption technologies you have to have a a good implementation cycle and what I just explained uh, is a big uh, project. Uh, it is a big overhead in many uh, of the applications that we see, whether it's a hotel booking or whether it's uh, whatever service you may imagine where your name together with your transaction and record have to be stored together, then uh, you uh, do have this challenge. And uh, so the commercially a viable solution mm -hmm. and accepted up until I would say two or three years ago was to just go ahead and hope that nothing happens mm -hmm. and hope that uh, your name would not uh, show up uh, on the internet as one of the villains uh, who lost data for for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. So bringing in the budget and the right skills uh, making it commercially uh, viable, that's also a matter of awareness, right? Uh, it's a matter of awareness and uh, this postponement strategy to the next year has only worked uh, because uh, awareness has, has been built uh, over the last 10 years, but it has only reached the levels now where people understand our data is uh, important, uh, our data is valuable, uh, if you look into the stock market, uh, you see how valuable the data is. Uh, the most uh, valuable companies in the world are all data companies. And this is how people gradually understood that uh, this is important and data continues to rise even in value and in importance. And uh, if you look at it from a political point of view, the European Union has understood that it's no longer acceptable that more than 90% of, uh, of consumer data is stored uh, mostly in the US, but not in the EU. And 90% uh, of corporate data is stored outside of the EU. So that, uh, uh, that has uh, translated into strategies how to make data more secure and we just 
add this Lego block into very big initiatives. We, uh, we understand that it's important to, to focus uh, on the Lego block, otherwise uh, there is always the danger to, uh, to end up in this long, expensive project type of initiative, which people have refrained from, uh, from accepting and adopting at this stage. Therefore, uh, the Lego block and data vaccinator uh, brings to the table uh, fast implementation, saves people money and reduces the risk dramatically of uh, data accidents. Mm -hmm. And would you say that data vaccinator with those benefits that you just named is supporting the European way the third way in comparison to the, the US and, the, and Asia? Uh, definitely, yes. Uh, the, uh, the data governance uh, is very important to, uh, to you as a person, to a company uh, as the owner of the data that uh, by the end of the day uh, ensures that your company has a future. If you don't have your data in order, your company is at risk. And on a on a country level or uh, on an EU level even, uh, it's the same issue. Uh, only if you govern your data, you are in control of your own destiny. Otherwise, somebody else is, but uh, these are organizations uh, and uh, if, uh, that uh, don't necessarily comply with the standards that you uh, consider uh, important, relevant, and imperative to be uh, pursued and to be followed. So uh, from that point of view, uh, Europe has to uh, become a mature uh, data continent and data vaccinator is an important part of it. Uh, beyond uh, Europe, we have uh, similar discussions in Asia. Uh, I mentioned Singapore. Uh, in initially, and uh, Singapore is a very advanced data uh, economy, and uh, Singapore is also the home of tens of thousands of uh, companies that have their regional headquarters in Singapore, which means um, the data has to be uh, in order, otherwise there is no uh, future for this data governing uh, country. And so uh, the Singaporean data privacy standards uh, that have been adopted are very uh, similar to GDPR standards in Europe. PDPA, uh -huh. uh, the abbreviations for them, uh, is more or less uh, the same as uh, European GDPR. But you, uh, and you see it across Asia. I just took uh, Singapore as an example. You see it uh, really across Asia and you, also see it in the US, but the US is not leading, the US is following because they come from a totally different mentality where data has always been something that, that you can sell to the market. Mm -hmm. This is what uh, Facebook has been doing all the time. This is what uh, yeah, all the big US American data companies uh, have been doing and this is also what uh, the stock market believes uh, is uh, the value by the end of the day of these companies. And if Europe wants to have a future and uh, the answer can only be yes, then uh, it is actually uh, sitting behind the own steering wheel and not let others drive. Mm -hmm. And with rising awareness around data security and cyber security sounds like um, the future for data vaccinator can only be to be implemented wherever personal data um, is stored is that uh, your utopia for for regify and for the data vaccinator or what are the next steps um, data vaccinator is already an independent company uh, demand has uh, been growing so rapidly that we decided to 
uh, we actually decided uh, after it was clear that uh, the that open source is the right strategy to go to have it as an independent company it's uh, currently being incorporated in luxembourg uh, luxembourg uh, is uh, in our view the leading european company when it comes to data management uh, data uh, orchestration of any kind and therefore uh, we chose Luxembourg, also the vicinity to Brussels uh, is important and uh, therefore Data Vaccinator is an independent company, but Data Vaccinator will not only grow in Europe, will, it will also grow uh, beyond Europe in a typical open source business model where the software is free to everyone and open to everyone. So, we, for example, were approached approached by uh, ministries uh, criminal justice was uh, an important discussion point and uh, of course you have uh, you can imagine you have in a database uh, the same roles you have a victim and uh, you have a transactional record about what happened and uh, you have suspects that may also be in that database uh, it's a very good idea to separate both uh, the transactional piece and the ID element of, of that very transaction and uh, organizations like criminal justice uh, would never talk to a typical commercial company uh, because uh, data governance is, is even more important there and therefore uh, they have to own the software, they uh, have to see exactly what the software does and uh, we have it on GitHub, so you go there and you have the source code. You can do with the source code whatever you want uh, within uh, the open source agreements that I just mentioned, AGPL and MIT. Uh -huh. So this was the um, key decision that we made early on and uh, from that point we uh, started uh, approaching the stakeholders. Uh, the stakeholders uh, is the public. We have a public interview now. Uh, the stakeholders are uh, the, the software companies that by the end of the day implement it or the, the software, uh, it can be an internal uh, software division uh, within, in that example, criminal justice. Uh, and of course, uh, everyone involved, uh, companies that uh, take care of your data because you, you gave them the data, the data processors uh, have to find ways and means uh, not to be uh, victims in the internet and be victimized uh, such uh, that your, your uh, name comes up. Uh, it's not uh, the bad reputation in the first place, but it's the loss, for example, of uh, several million uh, records and you go through the internet we we even have a blog <laughs> that uh, just puts the uh, the press releases on not the press releases but what is out there in the internet uh, onto this blog so that people who uh, want to get an idea about the data accidents that happen every single day have this idea but uh, these are the public ones uh, you can imagine that only 10% of the uh, accidents become uh -huh. publicly known. There is still a shadow figure of about 90% where people look to the right and look to the left and say, let's hope nobody saw it, uh, we yeah. just say nothing. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't heal the problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is where we are and uh, we are looking for strong support from whoever says uh, data privacy and data security is uh, important. And uh, then uh, we want to be enablers that uh, enable uh, these solutions in a way uh, to come back to the commercial side of it, which is commercially viable for those who have to implement it. It doesn't help uh, consumers and it doesn't help businesses if pseudonymization projects cost an arm and a leg and take two years to implement. Uh, yep. Data Vaccinator is here to uh, make it uh, possible in just 
a very short period of time and at a very low cost and at a very high quality. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's that's very convincing. Um, and I would like to also encourage um, the guests we have on a call. I know some of them are uh, open data, open source evangelist, data sharing experts to also give them a chance to address their questions if there are any. In the meanwhile, yes. Yeah, no, I'm interested, especially so I like, uh, in the in in the senior, for example, because I I didn't know about that. Um, are there like more examples? Because usually the U.S. is in the news. There were like Russia hack like COVID uh, vaccine information, which was kind of like James Bond like. <laughs> but do you have more of those type of examples or things that you worked on yeah, yeah. A, a friend of ours uh, he he started uh, to put it on uh, uh, on facebook and um, i'm not sure whether uh, i don't have it right in my head but uh, i can share the url with you after this call uh, it is openly available and um, there is a friend of ours who has uh, who has taken time and effort uh, to put them uh, on the one uh, web page and it's it's on Facebook but I can share it with you no problem <laughs> super okay thank you I can imagine it's it's as you say worse worse than we know worse than we hope yeah and, and I have another question that is the name I can imagine there has been a lot of thinking and you came up with data vaccinator. To me, a vaccination, right. um, let's say medically is, uh, is clear. Um, how does it translate to what you are doing? Yeah, basically uh, it's immunization against uh, something that we don't know. <laughs> we do not know. Uh, yes, we know uh, the data record, but we do not know from where the danger will come. As I mm -hmm. said, actually, uh, is it our friend uh, system integrator, Bob, not integrator, uh, the uh, uh, system administrator, Bob, who incidentally uh, forgot to tick the box? Yeah, mm -hmm. More or less making one million uh, records. Uh, giving one million records to the internet, uh, then that is an accident. Uh, and there are also parties uh, who uh, we know exist uh, and uh, who have a commercial business uh, that uh, is called hacking. There is not the ethical uh, hacker in the first place, but the unethical hacker uh, that uh, who uh, is uh, who is uh, a clear attack uh, vector to these uh, records. And there is even, uh, you, you may have come across uh, the, the name Honeypot. Mm -hmm. there, is, uh, there is even technology out there that says, um, we know accidents happen and we try to get the unethical ethical hacker onto a honeypot and then we somehow grill the unethical hacker. Uh, yeah, it's, it has become a big business, but uh, unethical hackers are also smart hackers. So if you end up in such a cyber accident once or twice, you will certainly find a way to navigate around it. So it's not a solution to the problem. The yeah. solution to the problem is only in organizing the data the way I described it. You mm -hmm. have the, uh, the data that identifies a person, but that can also be an important device mm -hmm. that has an address, that has a location. That device may be uh, an ATM somewhere out there, or maybe uh, an ATM is an automated teller machine <laughs> for those who are not from this industry, uh, or any other device, you uh, hear the stories about the IoT, Internet of Things, and of course that is proliferating. Uh, we have way more IoT devices 
uh, with access to the internet today than we have people in the world. A drone is an IoT device if the drone manages uh, to somehow have an internet address and the ability to communicate, then uh, you, we are already there. And uh, basically uh, separating uh, these uh, identity information from uh, the contents or how other people say payload information, I think it's not the best of terms, but they use it. Uh, the transactional information that goes with it, uh, that uh, is what uh, data highways uh, are going to need. And we have two sets of applications. Uh, the ones that are just about uh, being built, that is uh, the majority. And for them, uh, it's, it's very easy to just put data vaccinator in, like an airbag into a car. Uh, for the other set of applications, uh, these are, for the time being, the most important ones, the legacy applications that already exist. Mm. Uh, you have uh, a small construction site on this uh, data application uh, because you need to get the data vaccinator implemented into an already existing application. Uh, our job uh, has been and continues to be to facilitate this uh, road work that needs to be done. Uh -huh. that means uh, to make uh, the data vaccinator as uh, easy to implement as it uh, can possibly be. And that means to have it uh, very focused, to have it high quality, to have it what uh, software programmers call minimal footprint, which means only have in it what it needs and not uh, the baggage that uh, quite often comes with programming where programmers have so-called libraries from each and every part of, of the world and the industry uh, and then you end up with a humongous with a huge uh, application the data vaccinator uh, in contrast mm -hmm. will always be minimal footprint for this um, very reason and that also reduces vulnerabilities but uh, even more important makes it easy for programmers to work with so mm -hmm. these are the two sets of applications uh, for new applications uh, there is no better solution than uh, yeah. to start with data vaccinator right from the beginning for the existing ones uh, we have uh, discussions with system integrators who uh, find ways to easily implement data vaccinator into so-called legacy applications. Mm -hmm. and, and for those, we, yeah. and for so, those existing, but also for the new ones, um, there is also this potential uh, with regards to data sharing. I think we talked a lot about the generation yeah. and the storage of data, but once these Lego blocks are separate, um, let's say the medical records without the identifiable data, can be shared, for example, with research institutions, correct? Uh, it's uh, very easy to share what has already been split uh, in the first place. Uh -huh. So if you have totally anonymized data, you can do, and that is a prerequisite to doing it, what uh, usually is being summarized as big data. Big data means uh, and I take uh, an example from the medical world because we have just been in one of these. Uh, it is uh, genome sequencing and genome analysis. Uh, the, the hospitals that we have been working with, all of them have uh, databases uh, with that information, but you want algorithms, uh, smart algorithms to uh, have findings uh, after the analysis that you cannot have on a small set of data. You need a big set of data, therefore it's big data. But to make a long story short, it's way more effective uh, for 100 hospitals to put uh, their, uh, oh, uh, their data into one big pot uh, and then have an algorithm and a high performance computing facility do this analysis and then get as a net result uh, the findings of a much bigger data sample than the one that they have. 
So that is uh, one of the data sharing examples. And of course, uh, in any sample, uh, hospitals or contributors of data would only contribute if data governance is clear, which means uh, we own the data today, we own it in the future. Uh, it could also involve a contract that says, I, I give you uh, my data for, uh, say, half a day, and I only give it to you uh, with the promise that you don't uh, have, uh, have a copy. You just uh, erase it after the analysis that has been done. And so uh, I continue to be the sole owner of that data. That can be contractually managed. And if you mm -hmm. have trusted parties working with it, you can also execute such uh, data sharing. Uh, and uh, if that mm -hmm. applies uh, throughout the community of hospitals contributing, then uh, uh, what you need is the uh, logistics, data logistics solution to bring the data onto uh, one uh, computer where it's being analyzed, uh, analyzed and then the results uh, sent back. Uh, that is a good example, but where we started out, you wouldn't do it with data that has a name on it. Yeah. You would want the, uh, the name and the identity of the person separated from uh, maybe the disease information that uh, goes with uh, this data record, you only want the disease information uh, going with it. Yeah, absolutely. In, in my eyes, really a, a good, secure way to share data, even data that would be personal data, um, but is pseudomized um, for, for example, research and then uh, making a GDPR compliant even beyond Europe, which I think is also a, a potential, which might be hampered otherwise. But uh, are there maybe other questions from our audience listening in? We have touched upon what Data Vaccinator is, which uh, problem it is solving. We have talked about how uh, it is done and what, uh, or what is the potential for data sharing. Are there any other questions, Laura? Yeah, I actually do have a question. So I like the fact how you just uh, described the role of Data Vaccinator in um, aiding data sharing for uh, these medical types of data and, and for, for research mostly. But I was wondering, what do you see as the biggest barrier at this point for it not to take off even further? And yeah, what is the next step, the next barrier that you would like to see crossed or see lifted? Yeah, basically we, we talked about the barriers already. Uh, in the past there was, uh, it was on a, on a very low attention level. Uh, data privacy and data security uh, were, I don't want to say nice to haves, but if you, you could afford not to implement data privacy and security, and still be considered a serious and viable business. That uh, attitude has changed and uh, that uh, barrier has definitely come down. Uh, the, uh, the other barriers that you could imagine that uh, people uh, say it's too difficult to implement. And uh, we have in, in length and depth discussed uh, that issue, uh, we have a software background, the data vaccinate people, and we know uh, what the usual barriers to implementation are. And uh, if, you, if you find a good enough excuse, uh, then uh, why not take that excuse? Because people are busy, they have to lo do a lot of things, and uh, the day has only 24 hours. And uh, therefore, it is critically important uh, that a data vaccinator uh, is not an additional burden put uh, onto the shoulders of programmers who have already um, not enough sleep, but instead uh, give them something where they uh, say, oh, uh, this saves me uh, 50 hours as an individual programmers because I don't have to do this, I don't have to do that, I don't have to uh, do three or four other things and therefore 
uh, not only uh, the time consumed has to come down for this pseudonymization effort uh, that many face and have in front of them, but at the same time, the cost has to come down. What uh, we see uh, post-corona is an economy that uh, will definitely not uh, implement nice to haves, but uh, it is the critically important elements that are going to be implemented first. And uh, therefore, uh, we have to be serious about pseudonymization as much as it is written into law. Uh, the data privacy uh, laws are long and uh, there are fines that can be tough. Uh, but can be. Uh, the question is whether or not these fines are going to be imposed. Uh, we don't advocate uh, to impose huge fines. Uh, in contrast, we advocate to making uh, life, uh, uh, pseudonymized life, as easy as possible and uh, to make uh, these implementations also as uh, affordable as they can possibly be. Uh, that is the job that we have and then the barriers that you uh, ask for uh, are going to come down and then uh, there is uh, one barrier that uh, we we have in front of us and that is uh, awareness so uh, awareness and commitment uh, if uh, we hear from uh, politicians all over europe how important the whole thing is then uh, what we also want to see is commitment if what, uh, what we just uh, talk about is right, uh, people have, uh, have a higher security with their data or the risk profile of data goes down. If we implement it and the implementation in itself is not a big thing and rather saves money than costs money, then there is no excuse. And uh, the only barrier that I could see is that uh, awareness uh, uh, for European data initiatives uh, continues to be on the very low level uh, where the awareness has been for too long. Europe has only now understood that uh, in order in, to be in control of its own destiny, you have to uh, adopt a strategy where you really take these issues seriously and then uh, you are suddenly uh, beginning to be taken seriously in the world, which is not the case today. So European software with very few exceptions uh, is not considered to be, uh, to be of global standards, whether it's uh, wrong or right, whatever it is, but uh, this has to be the attitude. So Europe has to, if you look at Europe from a software industry point of view, there is only one truly global uh, European software company that is SAP, uh, whereas uh, the US has uh, certainly 100 plus and Asia has uh, definitely more than uh, Europe. So that uh, is, is a barrier. And uh, then uh, only if Europe uh, is taking uh, software seriously and and not just software, but the concepts behind data privacy, data security, pseudonymization, only if that is being taken seriously and not just uh, on rosy uh, Sunday afternoons uh, uh, in public uh, where politicians may celebrate this or one deed, but in daily life from Monday to Friday. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I also really like the point you made on the awareness and that's really something that also from our side is something that we are highly committed to. Uh, so thanks a lot for your explanation. Thank you very much, Kurt. Um, personally, I, I really like the spirit behind it that also you live and also what data vaccinator can mean and maybe already means to Europe. So um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, this spirit and data vaccinator with us and um, I, I think we will hear more from data vaccinator i'm very curious um, to to connect let's say in a few months from here and see uh, 
how much percentage of the legacy applications and the new applications already use the growing awareness to implement data vaccinator. Yeah, it will uh, it will be a journey and not <laughs> uh, and not a sprint. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, therefore, uh, uh, we we do uh, what we can do and what we must do, but. Uh, Awareness is critically important to uh, getting uh, Europe rolling on these important issues. Yeah, and this is what we are here for. And uh, I'm, I'm very sure that our guests today, but also the community that will, that will see this and listen to you, will be as inspired as we are, which will raise the awareness again. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, have a good day. and. Uh, uh, we have each other's uh, email contacts anyway. Contact exactly, anyway. exactly. We'll be in contact. Thank you so much and enjoy Thanks your day. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.